Hello there, my very good friends. On today's wrestling news, WWE rehires a couple of former champions. We tell you how CM Punk's antics cost this AEW star a huge pay per view main event. There were some last minute changes to Dynamite last night. And WWE earns a huge government payday for 2022 PLE. Mmm, I'm Andy. I'm Michael. And this is the Mmms. Let's kick this one <laughs> off. Let's kick this one off. We're not starting with CM Punk today. Wow, what a what a refreshing breath of air. He's, um, he's coming. He's, he's coming. got it. Don't worry. He, he's never <laughs> far away. He's always lurking. Uh, offers of pain. They've been re-signed by WWE, maybe. Secretly. Yeah. Maybe as far back as 2022. What the hell? Wait. It's bloody <laughs> August. That's eight months ago. Um, this is a report from Fightful Select, pretty much confirming as much. Mm -hmm. Now, Fightful had reported back in February that, that uh, WWE were interested in bringing back AOP, Akuma Rezar, Paul Ellering, apparently doing some negotiating, their former manager, of course. Uh, and it's noted in this new report that, that they were actually on a travel itinerary schedule thing in May uh, and yeah while this is kind of all unconfirmed at the moment the word is that they might actually have been brought back to WWE and re-signed uh, before Vince came back um, the quote here is it was before Vince McMahon came back because that put a halt on all signings beside new recruits Vince of course returned to the board of directors in January um, so that might give you an idea of the time scale Fightful note, yeah, the travel list stuff that I've kind of already gone over and they note that Ellering has been pretty important in any negotiations. Elsewhere, there is a report from PW Insider uh, noting that talk of offers of pain and Ellering showing back up has intensified over the past few weeks, uh, potentially on the NXT brand sometime next month. Next month starts tomorrow, so that could be, <laughs> that could be any second. Now, AOP haven't wrestled anywhere since they were released by WWE in September 2020. Last year, they rebranded themselves, what was it, Legion of Pain? That makes sense, Paul Ellering's yeah. their manager. Um, that was in May. That was also ahead of the uh, planned launch of their promotion wrestling entertainment series. Uh, we all know how that went. Uh, it, was it was it a real wrestling promotion? Was it an NFT front? I have absolutely <laughs> we'll no never idea. Know. But it didn't happen, and it's probably never happening. But it looks like AOP are on their way back to WWE, and it sounds like they've been signed secretly for ages. What the heck? It's a bit of a wild card story, this, isn't it? It's weird. I love Paul Ellering. Um, as this sort of, the guy that was always seen as this like intellectual figure alongside the Legion of Doom and now for the Office of Pain, is doing it as a shoot. I love that, like he's actually doing their admin and their paperwork. Bald head means big brain. Indeed. Look, um, oh, the NXT element of this story is weird because obviously they've done that run and people might remember them. It's not that long ago. I think WWE's tag division is pretty good. Mm -hmm. I think Triple H has put a renewed focus on it since he took over from Vince McMahon. I say renewed. He put some focus on the tag division <laughs> as opposed to Vince McMahon. Yeah. And yeah, I think they would be stepping into a division far greater than the one they walked away from or were released from years ago. But they were never the best tag team. But it's not a bad pickup, I don't think. We'll see. Yeah. Some of these ex NXT hires, there's a quite a spectrum mm -hmm. of how they get on. I just, uh, I just wouldn't have called it. I thought the <laughs> offers of pain were like. Not very good, but fun. <laughs> yeah. But fun. And I kind of loved them. Like they were really chaotic. Um, they had some cool power moves, yeah. and they certainly, uh, in their big matches, like uh, against your likes of DIY and stuff, they were they looked good. They didn't look out of place. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, not the most refined tag team in the world. But like they brought like a brute force, chaotic energy that I certainly appreciate. And they're gigantic yeah. as well, which is always fun. Uh, also, really good theme music. <laughs> chug chug. Also, as well, like Triple H being in the top chair means that Paul Ellering will probably at least be able to manage them again. Yes. Remember, they came into the main roster and Vince was like, Ugh, and yeah, he yeah, just walked straight out and left, never to return. Yeah, so, there yeah. was reports at the time that Paul Ellering didn't want to hit the road, but that I think he debunked that himself quite yeah. quickly. And it turned out it was just uh, the old man being a div. Yeah. Um, so, hey, let us know what you think down below. Secret rehire AOP. Would you like to see WWE more of this? <laughs> Bringing people back and just did not getting out there and not using them for nine months. That's weird. <laughs> uh, but let us know down below. Yeah. CM Punk. Yeah. CM Punk. It's that time. CM Punk. Uh, yeah, this is not so much about CM Punk, more about the people that were maybe impacted by all the CM Punk stories we've been talking about with the past Impact. few years. Uh, well, Impact. Maybe it'll be an Impact mm. 1000. Yeah, maybe. maybe. A big, a big surprise draw. He does it. He's wrestled there before, so, you know, big comeback. Maybe Ricky Starks will have to work Impact 1000 because it looks like he won't work all out, unfortunately. Well. 
Well, I'll let you get through okay. this first. Yeah, so he's potentially going to miss out on what Fightful Select are reporting as a potential All Out 2023 main event match against CM Punk. Presumably thought it would have been the real world's title match on the show in Chicago. Um, look, it's something I think most of us could have fantasy booked for the two of them. They'd uh, gone uh, ones each on collision in two like, sort of well-received matches as part of a well-received story that had really kind of rehabilitated Ricky Stark since the start of Collision. Um, you had the mega heavy heat angle with Ricky Steamboat uh, a few weeks ago where after Starks had beaten Punk, um, sorry, after Punk had beaten Starks, uh, that was how Starks kind of acted out mm -hmm. by whipping Ricky Steamboat and Punk came back and tried to chase him off, letting you know that a rubber match was on the way. It was then confirmed that Ricky Starks had been suspended and that he was going to have to become like a manager and he chose Big Bill as his individual wrecking machine for a little while. Uh, well, I, I mean, to be fair, already the greatest manager of all time because he picked Big Bill. But yeah, it was kind of like showing itself to be, especially because he was going to miss All In. Like All Out was going to be his specific reward. And then that looked like it's been thrown up in the air um, as a result of obviously the potential suspension of CM Punk and the possible absence, though everything remains... A bit grey in that regard, not least with the announcement on Dynamite last night that Starks will challenge Ricky Steamboat <laughs> to a strap match on the paper. So Hell yeah. He might get his day in the sun, but it's going to be a pretty dark sun if he does. And aye, the punk match, that's the punker in it. Everything's up in the air. Yeah, yeah I, I would love to see Ricky Starks versus the steamer on paper. <laughs> uh, it, it completely different, uh, perverse appeal to, to Starks versus Punk Free, of course. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's going to be weird. I wonder what, what comes of that. Uh, obviously, there's going to be casualties of this situation that had nothing to do with this situation. Mm -hmm. So you can blame CM Punk, you can blame Jack Perry, you can blame Tony Khan, you can blame whoever the heck you want. Sounds like Ricky uh, probably missing out on that real world title match, unless somehow AEW miraculously uh, figures out a way uh, to wrap their investigation and deem CM Punk free of blame yeah. uh, within the next like two or three days. It's probably off the table and that sucks because Ricky's been really good, the story's been good and he doesn't deserve to, to lose that spot. But the other guy got himself suspended, so mm. he kind of has to. It sucks on many different levels. The Steamboat strap match could be uh, just absolutely savage. Oh, I kind of want to kind of have a look at that. He wrestled either this year or last year, Steamboat. Yeah. Uh, it was his first one in ages. He's 70 years old, for goodness sake. Um, hey, one of the all-time greats. Maybe you can uh, turn back time. Can you imagine Steamer interacting with Big Bill? Oh, all my God. <laughs> <laughs> the, the Steamer taking a Big Bill joke slam, brother. <laughs> Oh, let's, let's go. Imagine Big Bill hitting him with a big boot. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry, Ricky. I really did, Mr. We love you. And that's sorry. why we want to see it. Sorry, Mr. Blood. <laughs> it, it would be really good. All uh, right. Dynamite last minute changes last night. Not the product. You know, usually when we report these things, it's like some crazy billionaire, mm -hmm. and we have a few of those uh, changing their mind last minute. That wasn't the case with Dynamite. Some very real situations impacted this show. Tony Khan tweeted before Dynamite uh, or X'd, whatever. Uh, I'm not going to do his voice. Uh, but uh, due to minor illnesses, uh, to big talent traveling this week and uh, the hur Hurricane Idalia mm -hmm. uh, affecting flights, I've changed some plans for Dynamite tonight. Coming off all in, AEW's greatest night and the most tickets sold for any wrestling show ever. Uh, there's the Tonyisms. Uh, expect a great Dynamite tonight on TBS. So, yeah, some some stuff impacting the show. Uh, it's worth noting that prior to this tweet, the only match that was announced was Penta versus Orange Cassidy for the international title, the winner facing John Moxley. Uh, he went and added uh, three more matches. Moxley wrestled Commander on the show. There was a six woman tag, Statlander, Baker, and Shida versus Sakura, uh, Rose, and Shafir. Uh, and we got Eddie Kingston versus Wheeler Utah as well. Um, so obviously the hurricane is a very concerning situation and uh, best wishes to anyone out there who might be watching this, who might be impacted by it directly or indirectly. Uh, scary, scary stuff. Um, there's, you know, the illness thing. That is the business of the people who may be suffering from whatever illness they might have. So best wishes to them. Hope they get well soon. Um, but also there was a report, I think it was last week or, or maybe early this week about uh, how talent who wanted to attend uh, Wyndham Rotunda, Bray Wyatt's uh, services, funeral services, mm. uh, a memorial and that, were going to be able to take the time off from Dynamite. So maybe that impacted it as well. Um, but yeah, some last minute changes, some scrabbling, some pulling things together. Uh, it's been the story of AEW since day one, really. They've had to contend with a lot of external things messing with the program. And it was the same again last night. 
it's a lot this week, isn't it? Um, it was always going to be uh, potentially fraught with a few issues when you're doing the two pay-per-views uh, a week apart, not least in completely different parts of the world. But then, as you say, the Bray thing already stood to, um, like, I guess, tinker with the placement of the roster yeah. and the setup of the roster before the weather circumstances, before, if you think about even the travel uh, chaos on Monday, when the roster couldn't get out of England or mm -hmm. out of Heathrow, I think it was, until very late on the night, they were delayed by almost 24 hours getting home, yeah. so aye, it was always going to be a week, and I think AW have like, felt that already. They're in Chicago, aren't they now? Like They were there last night and they're there for the whole rest uh, of the week. Sir, at uh, Hoffman Estates, please My apologies get it to right. the Chicagoans, yes indeed. It can, they're in a completely different part of Illinois last night, <laughs> before they go to Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> Our oh, island is so tiny. Yeah, <laughs> great, <laughs> greatest city in the US, man. Tremendous. Hey, I love really? Chicago. Oh, Chicago's uh, so good. I'd love, to, I'd love to be there for all three shows, man. Oh, man, yeah. But some people couldn't be, and that's a shame. S yeah. You know, every, I hope everybody's okay. I echo your thoughts. Yeah. Like, a weird time. Speaking about a tiny island, uh, a little corner of it. Uh, Drew McIntyre's backyard. Sorry. Drew McIntyre's hometown. Cardiff, <laughs> Cardiff Wales. Uh, ever heard of it? Well, WB have, and they were paid very handsomely um, by the local government for 2022's Clash at the Castle. Um, we'd heard, obviously, that this was part of a government subsidy deal. It was far from just, oh, we love Wales and we want to pick the stadium. There was always a deal in place. And it was WrestleNomics that came through uh, with the uh, news that it was around £2.2 .2 million pounds or $3 million for Clash at the Castle. That was from the government to WWE to run that site. It's very much akin to the um, WrestleMania bidding wars that WWE like to bid up every year now for their major shows. Um, the, uh, what have I got here? There was a press release about it. Um, the PLE reported around 21.8 million back into the Welsh economy. That's $28 million. So obviously that government will see this as a, a rousing success, mm -hmm. a great bit of business for the government and indeed for Cardiff Wales. Um, and uh, they, it's also noted that the government subsidies were significantly higher than those WWE received for the from the Puerto Rican administration for May's 2023's backlash. Obviously, yeah. another PLE that um, leaned heavily on the locality and made the most of the kind of I guess the relationship they built with the local area. This has been um, a business strategy as much as anything else, hasn't it? Like you've seen yeah. Nick Khan and Triple H working um, quite you know closely together to ensure that when these business deals are being made, then the product kind of reflects that. And then now you're seeing the return on these investments coming in. It sort of seems like everybody's getting to win. Like yeah. most, most of all WWE, you don't need to pay to get into these places. Yeah, it's kind of like a bidding war situation. Um, a lot of people, when Clash of the Castle was announced for Wales, I remember uh, dialogue was, why not London? Because it's mm -hmm. the bigger city and all of this stuff, uh, blah, 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 blah. Well. Kind of paid them, yep. so there you go. Uh, it's how it works. Uh, WrestleMania is the same. Uh, there's like bidding wars and or whatever, whatever. It's just another revenue stream for a company that has never been more profitable and has never been in better shape uh, business-wise. Yeah. There you go. Uh, also, Clash was really good, so oh, well, uh, that's nice. Dare I say it? Like, it's a smart way for a promotion to make money. Mm -hmm. I'd rather hear stories of them making money this way rather than some of the other ways they make yeah, money. Like, I mean, this is like this is earnest. We've got a great. We've got a great show want to buy it and then they deliver a great show yeah that's like the exchange of goods and services i want from a wrestling show exactly than... and, and you know on on clash at the castle and and backlash they weren't running a paid propaganda for a regime with a horrendous human rights imagine track that record so imagine hey that. turns out <laughs> turns out michael sports washing kind of bad rubbish uh right let's move on to today's We've got our club uh, back Today's Twitter question, uh, YouTube community questions. <laughs> community work. How am I doing, Bonnie Lad? <laughs> um, Brendan Paramore would like to know, is the whole Hangman versus CM Punk drama, uh, do you think that Adam Page uh, trying to be professional has hindered him or made him look weaker in all of this? No, but the booking has. Mm. Um, I think there's a real, um, I've got certain empathy with Hangman Page and I respect his dignified silence throughout, quite honestly. Me too. Um, he's entitled to, he, look, he can go online and shoot every day if he wants. This is a situation that's directly affected him and impacted him and he's been a part of it and this is the choice he's elected to make and I've, I've got a lot of time for that. I do think everything that has happened seems to have taken away the company's eye on this character and outside of that pretty cool John Moxley series he had that kind of peaked at Revolution, They've taken their eye off the ball with him from a booking standpoint. So if you are feeling like Hangman Page, the character or the performer or his stories are on the weaker side, I would place that blame elsewhere from yeah. this situation. Yeah, I think so. Um, 
regardless of like, the backstage stuff, Hangman strikes me as kind of an introverted guy. Like, I don't think mm. the anxious millennial cowboy. I don't think that's a gimmick. Um, mm. I think that's a reflection of who he is. So I, I can absolutely see somebody like that who's maybe had a spot of bother of CM Punk. Just kind of washing his hands yeah. of it, kind of not really acknowledging it and going, hey, I, maybe I think this guy sucks, but I'm done with that. And I've, I'm, I, I'm not going to involve myself in any more of the kerfuffle. Mm the shenanigans uh, with it. So I can absolutely see that. Has that hindered him? Nah, I don't think so. I think he'll come out of this whole situation smelling like roses. Obviously, you know, the workers' rights promo and all of that stuff, um, that probably shouldn't have happened. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I don't. I think that was a misstep from him because it was the catalyst for all of this. And yeah. look, CM Punk is the kind of guy where if he feels even 0.1% slighted by you, that's it, you're done, you're his enemy. Uh, and that's how it was reacted and that's how the whole thing started. So. Yeah, he shouldn't have done that, but Punk has done much worse to make it much worse <laughs> uh, since then. So yeah. there you go. Uh, E.D. McSorley would like to know, what dastardly idea will WWE come up with to top AEW accomplishments in the UK, lol? Um, this will be tough because there is no bigger arena yeah. in the UK. So unless they uh, reconfigure uh, Wembley, uh, which would be quite tricky. Although AEW did quite have quite a few tarped off sections so maybe they could open them up with a small stage and go blah 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 we mm -hmm. tried to 90 other options they could just lie that yeah it's pro wrestling that's yeah. what happens we had 200 000 people in the stadium <laughs> but for me the most obvious one is uh the gross the the gate um wwe i imagine we charge a little bit higher ticket prices mm -hmm. than AEW. so even if they held you know an event in wembley and they draw eighty thousand with a bigger stage which would take up more room which they like to do and i like that too um they could say hey we, we, we made double as much money because we charge more for tickets i think that's how they'll do it and i think they will try and boot wembley that's certainly a way like tactically they could as like to, what was the word dastardly dastardly i don't know if this is the answer you're looking for Good booking. Have you seen WWE, <laughs> have you seen WWE's business the last couple of years? Like the idea that like the company could come to this country, and I think they will struggle to whip up the excitement that AEW did because this return to Wembley from SummerSlam '92. This was a thing that people wanted from wrestling, full stop. Yeah. And they got it with AEW. The biggest sporting event in Wembley history. Nothing major has ever happened there apart from SummerSlam '92. Exactly. Yeah. Ever. Uh, yeah. So I heard this thing happened in 1966. I'm not, I'm not sure what that was. Oh, I thought the League One playoff in 2022 uh, was the one I was thinking of. Right was up there. Pretty big day. Right up there. Um, yeah, like the WWE returning to the UK, and I think you're right. I think they will try and book Wembley. Feels like uh, the announcement of All in 2024 was as much to kind of put AEW stamp on it as best as possible in order to shut WWE out. That too has happened yeah. between promoters forever, you know, locking other promotions out of venues. We saw it with Madison WWE Square still Garden does it today. And, you know, yeah. it still goes on. So that could, in itself could be a turf war, but they have no other option than Wembley. So when we were there and looking around the building and you were spotting areas thinking, right, could WWE put butts in those seats? The lie is interesting, but I would love that AEW have tore up that rule book yeah. and said no we're just going to actually tell the truth about yeah. numbers like more of that that'll be what forces WWE's hand here they can't use bragging rights if everybody immediately exposes the number as a as a fib mm -hmm. so Cody Rhodes can be the man that sells the night down oh, there's your dastardly plan oh there you go books are, uh, the dashing as well drawing characters <laughs> yeah final one comes from uh, Nick Rosser who would like to know if you had to get rid of one politicking scamp between the Hulkster, HBK, and Phil Brooks, who would you pick and who are you giving a buy? Right? I guess this is if you can just erase one of these gentlemen from history. Hulk Hogan, Shawn Michaels, or, or CM Punk. Three of the biggest politicsmen yeah. in the game. Who are you getting rid of? Hulk Hogan. Yeah, he's a pretty. Easy. Hulk Hogan. He's a racist piece what? of trash. <laughs> Oh, e, yeah, don't you know? like the, <laughs> It's a simple the Hulkster. Like the, <laughs> okay, if Hulk Hogan hadn't been exposed as a, a big racist, would you still get rid of him? Yes, yeah. because Shawn Michaels and CM Punk's... Well, uh, Shawn Michaels upset your fave. He did. Oh, yeah. He upset my fave. But this was the thing about Shawn Michaels. <laughs> Night is Shawn, even if you're a Brett guy, was kind of an irresistible whirlwind of chaos himself. Yeah. Like, I kind of miss that brand of specific chaos. And I think CM Punk, for being the Brett guy, has shown that he can be a spiritual successor to Sean, and that's despite being straight edge. Yeah. So like, there you go. like I kind of those two um, politickers have for me produced kind of amazing wrestling television in spite of their politics. Yeah. Hogan's politics, you know, if you I discount his politics in WWE because I mean look at the business, but some of the politics in WCW, killing the Stinger at Starcade, bringing his friends in when he was a babyface in '94 and '95, like the stuff he wouldn't do in the like '99 and 2000 to try and drag some young people mm -hmm. up. 
made for horrendous television. If we're just talking the politics behind the scenes and how they affect what you watch, like Hulk Hogan was a wrecking ball on yeah. WCW at times. Like there was just, it was, and you could see it, you could watch it happening in front of you. Why is that happening? Oh, because that doesn't work for me, brother. Oh, great. Okay, then well, I just, I guess, okay, I, guess I just don't get it, you know? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. And it's like the kind of stuff where, like, watching all of that stuff back today is really funny, mm. but in the moment, not so much. Yeah. Anyway, let us know what you think down below. Who are you deleting? Hulk Hogan, CM Punk, Shawn Michaels? We've been the the news guys, the paper boys, the news agents, and we'll see you tomorrow. Check this video out too. It's good. Yeah. Bye. Peace.